In our history, the end of a civilization has rarely been sudden and unexpected. Usually, the process is long, slow, and leaves society and culture continuing for many years. The collapse of the Mayan civilization in Central America, for example, took place over three centuries between 750 and 1050 CE. It was marked by a 10 to 15 percent increase in death rate, and some cities were abandoned, but other areas flourished. And writing, trade, and urban living remained until the arrival of the Spanish in the 1500s. The collapse of civilizations can also provide benefits for some. The emergence of the nation state in Europe wouldn't have happened without the end of the Western Roman Empire many centuries before. This has led some scholars to speculate that collapse is like a forest fire. An act of creative destruction that provides resources for evolution and space for reorganization. Our visions of past collapses are typically seen through the eyes of its most privileged victims, the elite, whose lives, unlike those of the poor, remain comparatively well documented. But for the peasants of Sumer in ancient Mesopotamia, for instance, The political collapse that took place at the beginning of the second millennium BCE was the best thing that could have happened. Researchers have known for some time that early states had to restrict the freedom of much of their population. The end of the Sumerian civilization and the disappearance of harsh rulers from cities meant that the peasants could escape from hard labor and heavy taxation. None of this means, however, that we should not be concerned about the prospects for a future fall. We are more dependent than ever on state infrastructure. Lack of this can cause chaos. Take the near total loss of electricity that affected New York City in 1977. Crime and destruction surged. 550 police officers were injured, and 4,500 people were arrested. This was the outcome of the financial crisis in the 1970s, as well as a simple loss of electricity. By contrast, a power cut in 1877 in New York City probably wouldn't even have been noticed. Modern civilizations might be less capable of recovering from deep collapse than earlier ones. Individual hunter-gatherers knew how to live off the land. Yet people in industrial society lack basic survival skills. Knowledge is increasingly held not by individuals but by groups and institutions. It is not clear if we could recover if our present society collapsed. Finally, it's significant that the world has become more interconnected and complex. This enhances our capabilities, but interconnected systems. Are more prone to random failure than isolated ones. Interconnectedness in financial systems can initially provide protection, but after a certain point, it can actually cause everything to collapse. Historically, this is what happened to Bronze Age societies in the Mediterranean. The interconnectedness of these people increased the prosperity of the region. But also set up a row of dominoes that could be knocked down by a powerful combination of earthquakes, warfare, climate change, and rebellions. Collapse then is a double-edged sword. Sometimes it's a chance to revive decaying institutions, yet it can also lead to loss of population, culture, and political structures. If in the past collapse has had both positive and negative consequences, in the modern world. It might only lead to a dark future.